Okay, my friends, Roger Spur, Mud Fossil University. This is a little bit of a shocker. You know that it's from day one. I've been saying the Earth is alive. Everything in space is biology. The astronauts come in from a spacewalk and say their suits smell like steak. I have meteorites here in my shop that have blood in them right now. And every one that I have seen does. Even the iron meteorites, you will find blood in them. I've seen it. They cut them in half, you're going to find red and black blood inside them because the iron is from the lungs and the heart usually. It smelts coming through the atmosphere. So, what does this say about the Last Supper? Why am I even talking about this and then talking about this other stuff? Well, the final meal of Jesus before his death is given a mis mystical significance, a really crazy kind of thing, avoiding any appearance of Jesus being a passive victim. He just said, I'm going to go get killed, and that's the end of it. He portrays him as a willing offering, as a sacrifice. Now, I'm just going to come down here. You can read this whole thing about it, but what it boils down to, it says that the concept of eating the body of God the God was familiar to non-Jews from pagan rites. The pagans apparently would eat, they say they're eating the body of a God. However, it would have been more acceptable to them, the Jews, at this particular time than it is now, obviously, to eat the body of anybody. Now, Protestants see this account as, you know, just sort of metamorph uh, metaphorical, just sort of, you know, yeah, it just sort of means something but it's not real and consider the rite of the last sup to be basically symbolic just something to say let's let's remember in this way and it'll make sense to them if we if we just portray it this way so they don't really think about it as being true and the catholics the bread and wine actually and miraculously transform into the body and blood of christ without however changing their apparent form. Now let's see what it says. What, what did Christ say? Well, this is what it says here. It says, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever, and the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. All right. That's going to be the bread is his flesh. The Jews then disputed among themselves, how can this man give us his flesh to eat? So Jesus said to them, very truly, truly, I tell you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. All right, we're going to think this over again a couple of times. I want you to think it through yourself. Truly, I tell you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man. It's not the Son of God. The flesh of the Son of Man. And drink his blood, you have no life in you. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood have eternal life, and I will raise them up on the last day. For my flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me, and I in them, just as the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so whoever eats me will live because of me. Now it says, this is the part that I, I, I got to really look into, it says, I tell you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man, the Son of Man, I think this is a mistake. I'm going to look into it. Okay, I thought this over. The only way I can interpret this is to take it as two separate statements. One of them is that Jesus said to them, Truly I tell you, you must eat the flesh of the Son of Man, which is basically the dirt in the ground is going to turn into food at some point and drink the f fluids that come out. You have to do that to have life in you. Right, that's a statement. You are going to end up eating the flesh of the Son of Man, of mankind, 
like cannibalism, but it's not really cannibalism. It's just the nature of the way things turn back into life again. That's how I'm going to read this. The only way I can read it. Now, the second part of the statement says, whoever eats my flesh, Jesus, and drinks my blood, Jesus' blood, has eternal life, and I will raise them up at the last day. For his flesh is the real food, and my blood is the real drink. So, he's saying that the flesh and the blood of man is required for life. You have to do that to, to, to live. You're just going to have to live under those circumstances. There's nothing you can do about it. But if you want to live forever, here's how you have to do it. You have to eat and drink of the one that the Father sent, which is Jesus. Not the ones of the Son of Man, who is just happens to be what's rotting in the ground and growing more plants. Basically, that's how I'm going to have to take that. What do you think?